Um, so thanks for being on the call tonight. I'm really excited because we're going to talk about a couple of things. One is time management. And so Sarah Cunningham is going to talk about that for us. She's got some tips. Um, and then we're going to talk about prepping for resolution season because it is right around the corner. But what we do now is going to set us up for that. Um, so Sarah, let's talk a little bit uh, first, if you want, about time management. I know that's something we all struggle with, um, especially when we all have full-time jobs, we have families, and we have other obligations. Um, and we're not all working plexus full-time, you know, by ourselves. So you want to start? Um, with your tips for time management? Uh-oh. Sarah? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Yep, I can now. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to share my desktop? Can I do that here? Yeah. Can we see it if you share it? Yep, there we go. Okay. Perfect. 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 Excellent. Perfect. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad that everybody's here. Amy, what a great group that we have. It's fantastic. Um, and Amy asked me to talk a little bit about time management. I have to be honest, it's really near and dear to my heart. Just simply, it's something I do in general just to help people um, learn a little bit more about maximizing their time. Um, and I really find um, in researching and reading, a lot of people say that it is the key to success. So there's a couple things that I was thinking about in preparation of this. Um, Michelle, who's on our team as well, she always talks about planning and picking a night to plan. And I think that's important. And I've actually just started recently doing that. I do that on a Sunday night. And I kind of sit down and I plan out what I think I want to do for all the entire week. And I really do action out myself in terms of you know, who do I want to work, reach out to, how many potentials do I want to connect with, how many customers do I need to follow up with, um, what do I want to do with my team um, below me and helping them get themselves organized. And I found that quote that said, failing to plan is planning to fail. And I find that if I don't do that, if I kind of skip that, piece of it, then I'm always running the rest of the day trying to kind of catch myself up. And by the end of the week, I find myself going, well, what, what did I accomplish? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's like, for me, number one, Amy, like no matter what else, I think we need to have an idea of what we want to go into um, the week with. But yeah, that's a really good idea. I know a lot of people use like Sunday night or whatever night during the week is your night to just jot some things down. Cause I'm the same way. If I don't have an idea of what I'm going to do, then I feel like I'm just winging it during the week. And then at the end of the day, I wasn't um, productive or I ended up kind of doing a lot, but still felt like I didn't get anything done. So I feel like I was wasting my time and it wasn't effective. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then I think, I don't know, I'm a person that I like to check things off a to-do list and that makes me feel like I'm more productive, but it's also kind of cool to look back on like, what did I do? And then you feel like you've accomplished a little bit more. And I know for me, so one thing I did guys, when I was working full time and Sarah, will talk about this in a minute, just finding the time, but I mm -hmm. only had like my lunch hour or I only had like before the family got up in the morning. So I I did have to be really focused on what I was going to do, but I still didn't have a plan. I just had like a couple things in my head, like, oh, I have to send customer emails. And so I would do it, you know, during my lunch hour. So I really think um, coming up with a better kind of time management plan is just going to help everybody. Yeah, I would agree. Um, so I put that first just because I know you and I talked all about a lot of stuff, Amy, but I figured like if we don't get planning, then none of the rest of this is going to make sense to us. Um, and then the other day, so one of the things, um, I do work from home full time. I have, uh, you know, a during the day type of job that works me 40, 50 hours. And so I do my plexus in the afternoons and in the evenings and on the weekends. Um, but one thing I am trying to do is find the time when I can to maximize on what I'm listening to. And so that's my commute time. It's like my windshield time when I'm in the car. Um, and I just the other day fell upon this um, YouTube video that Celeste was doing. I think we all kind of know Celeste as one of our double diamonds in the Plexus business. So obviously she's super successful, but she talked about a DMO and I was like, what in the world is a DMO? I remember asking Amy, do you know what a DMO is? And she's like, no. Um, so it is, it's a daily method of operation. This is consistency at its finest. This is you deciding in addition to that plan, something that you want to do 
every day and in the way you want to do it. So like, for example, um, you know, you could wake up and you could decide like in the morning for the first, you know, 20 minutes, I'm going to scroll through Facebook and get myself updated on everything that happened on the team page. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could be something that you commit yourself to doing every day. It could be something else like you're posting every day. Like that's another daily method of operation. I'm going to like one personal post and one business post every day. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm looking through the team pages for 20 minutes and copying down things I want to do in the future. Um, Another piece of the daily method of operation is thinking about reaching out to five people. I mean, it could be five people that are potentials. It could be five people that you don't even know. Um, I know a couple of people on our team, they do things like they are making five new connections a day. So the person in front of them in the lunch line or the person at the gas station trying to build their network, um, they kind of set themselves the goal of doing that with five people. Mm-hmm. There is something called like the 531 rule, which is basically you're going to build your network by five people every day by reaching out, you know, you're going to do three follow-ups and maybe you're going to try to work to, you know, sell one or sign one person a day. So that could be anything really, if you think about it. But what I love about this is this speaks a hundred percent to consistency. And if you kind of have an idea of every day, what you want to do, in addition to planning out that week, it almost becomes routine and then it's you kind of live in the life of plexus right and really work in your business right amy often reminds me like we're the ceo of our own business so how are we going to operate ourselves every day to make sure we're giving to our business what we need to give to them mm-hmm. sorry guys okay anything about that amy um no so i was just kind of thinking of different um, different um, CMOs. So it can be different for everybody. And so I had just jotted a couple down. I actually think we put some in the group the other day, an image of what kind of a Plexus power day would look like. And, you know, I think it can be different for everybody based on how much time you have, whether it's an hour or whether it's, you know, two hours or whether you just have 15 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the afternoon and 15 minutes at night. The great thing about Plexus is it's not, it doesn't have to be right a 40 hour a week gig. It can kind of fit into our lives. But when you have the time or make the time, you have to make sure it's effective. And I think that's what Sarah's saying. You have to make sure that what you're doing is an income producing activity. So um, I know some people, their DMO or their, their daily method is they spend 30 to 60 minutes on social media and productive social media. So making your posts, scrolling the team pages, you know, checking out YouTube videos. Then they might spend 15 or 20 minutes connecting with their team, both their current team and their upline, whether Mm -hmm. that's checking messenger or sending messages out, or even like um, checking to see where your team is for their points or their rank or how they're doing. If somebody's struggling. Um, And then Sarah, you mentioned the five, three, three, one. I've seen it 5331. I've seen it 531. I mean, there's all kinds of iterations of it. Yeah, and it's whatever works. It has the same essence to it. Right, because I was going to say, I saw a 321. Yeah. You reach out to three new potentials. You touch base with two current potentials. And then you talk to one new person about the business opportunity. So, you know, whatever works for you, I think as long as you have some sort of a system, Um, And then the other thing I have seen um, people then spend 30 minutes of their own self-development. So whether it's reading a, you know, network marketing book, watching some of those training videos, making sure, because Sarah, what you're, you know, you're saying that you say all the time, you can't pour from an empty cup. Oh yeah. You can't pour from an empty cup. So if you don't have it, you can't give it. Right. So make sure that you are also kind of feeding your own, um, you know, or filling your own cup. Yeah. The daily method. And the other thing I read just recently, Amy, that really resonated to me. So as Amy mentioned, and as I did too, is, you know, I have a really hectic job outside of Plexus and um, it keeps me really busy. 
Um, and Amy has told me, Sarah Taylor has told me, they have all said, you can work this business part-time, but you can't work it sometimes. And I just saw a quote the other day that said, sometimes get paid sometimes. And I was like, oh, that's so true. Like if you're only going to give your business a little bit of time and it's not regular and it's not consistent, then you're not going to get paid regularly and you're not going to get paid consistently. Right. And although our biggest motivation is to help others, a lot of us have a financial motivation. I know I do. So I have to keep that in mind for my consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speaking of money, Amy, like you've mentioned it before, so income producing activities, like I didn't even think about this before um, really considering it, but when I think about the little bit of time I do have, I need to put it where I'm going to produce an income. So it is finding potentials. Um, it's like I came just tonight from working a, um, a holiday party that was doing kind of a shop and see. So I had my Plexus business set up and I've spent my time today and invested in that and I've reached out to everybody and I collected all of their names and email addresses, right? That's an income producing activity because guess what I'm gonna do is I'm either gonna find them on Facebook and I'm gonna friend them and say, hey, I really loved meeting you or I'm sending them an email address or an email right. mm -hmm. But sometimes, Amy, our activities may feel like they're income producing, but they're really not. Oh my gosh. I So guys, I used to fall into this all of the time and I don't wanna steal your one of your um, bullets there, Sarah, but I would, I would maybe have an hour in Plexus. I'd get on Facebook. I'd check out um, the team page. And this was kind of in the beginning. I don't even think I had built the Rockstars team yet. But I would get on, you know, what was the dream team page. And then the next thing I know, I have felt like I have been working for an hour, but I've gotten sucked into Facebook. I'm watching videos. I'm reading through people's questions on the page. And next thing I know, my hour's gone. I have to go back to work and I'm not actually done any income producing activity. It's so, so true. So, you know, while all those things are all great, because I, you know, I think you can learn a lot when you scroll through the team pages and see different questions people are asking and how we answer them that's not income producing activity. And when we're all working other jobs and you only have a limited amount of time, you have to make sure that you're focused on those IPAs is what they call them in Plexus world, those income producing activities. Mm -hmm. So what are those things? Those things are, you know, posting to Facebook, um, checking in with your customers, sending emails to potentials, following up with potentials, those are income producing activities. Anything else um, is not. So I think not only do you have to figure out your daily method of operations, but when your time is limited and you have limited amount of time, you really got to focus on those IPAs. And you know, they can change. They don't have to be the same every single day. Um, there's a video I just saw. Actually, I think Sarah, I don't know if you had it or are going to post it yet. Wasn't there a Plexus mm -hmm. video on IPAs? Yep, there is, and I'm going to do that tonight after this. Because awesome. I think they, they kept it really simple where they did. for several weeks, the IPAs are just, what, posting once a day, follow, follow up, and then, like, reaching out to two new people, but then reporting back um, to your team and letting everyone know, okay, I did my IPAs for today, just because mm -hmm. that helps with accountability, too. Yeah, it does. You know, something you just said is that like income producing activities could probably change for us. Um, but I want to go back and say our DMOs probably shouldn't and they, sh they shouldn't change daily. They probably should be something that you have some consistency to. Around yeah. That. Mm -hmm. yep. This is something I still struggle with, too, um, <clears throat> because I feel like a lot of times I'm just um, I can't get my head above water. Mm. And I, I think I've told you before and some others, I would like to find what are my daily, like what's my daily method of operation and then what's weekly and then what's monthly. Mm. Um, and so I think that's another way you could break it down further. Uh, well, and it also gives, both of those give accountability. Like that's, I think, a big part of this. Like if you have a task list that you're working towards that's accountability. And when you're running your own business, yeah, I'm accountable to Amy because she's my upline and she's my friend and I want her and I to succeed. But I have to find my own accountability and that's me being organized in what I'm doing daily. Yeah. 
no. Um, not to move on too quickly, but I read this when I was preparing for this called Embrace the Power Hour. And this is totally me um, because I literally probably have one, maybe two hours a day. I usually try to take an hour in the morning and an hour before I go to bed. And they said, you know, turn off your distractions. And so what I do is, you know, I put my email off, I put my phone aside, I go into my room, I turn the TV off, I do everything to minimize distractions, and I'm fully focused in that one hour. And sure enough, I get more done than if I were to give myself a couple of hours. And I've done that before, like on a Saturday, my husband will take our son, and I'll have like all morning, I know Amy's guilty of this, like we'll have all morning, and I'll find all other crazy things to do. But if I give myself and say, I'm going to sit here for just one hour, and that's what I have, and I have my list of my plan and my DMO, mm-hmm. you're much more productive. Oh, yeah. That's I just great. called you out, Amy. I've known you six, since college, and I know you do this, right? Yeah, like, I'm totally oh, true. four hours to do everything. Well, and the other thing, too, is, you know, as you're adding customers and you're adding team members, mm-hmm. I was getting to where I just felt like, I constantly had to reply to everybody right away when they'd send me a question or or as soon as they'd join or order, I'd have to hurry up and send them an email. And so I was doing that all day long and I felt like I couldn't get caught up. So I started doing the power hour too. And I really had to do this when I was working still and commuting. Um, Mine would be uh, usually after everyone went to bed, I would stay up sometimes, you know, on the weekends is usually when I get up earlier than everybody else, but I would spend like, so every Monday, that's when I do all of my emails. Um, unless, you know, somebody orders like on a Thursday and I know maybe they're, well, not now because of the delays, but back when it was two day shipping, Mm -hmm. I just had to make sure that people got the instruction email before they got their product. So I would like on Mondays, okay, this is when I'm going to send all of my new customer emails. And this is when I'm going to send all of my new ambassador emails. And then, you know, on the 15th of the month, this is when I'm going to check in with all of my new people from last month. Instead of feeling like every day you have to check in with somebody new, um, trying to come up with that system. But it's right. The thing I have to do for this, too, is close Facebook. Oh, my gosh. If I close Facebook and close all my browsers and just focus on those emails, I can get so much more done um, than if I would have everything open. Because you just get, it's the time suck. You just get sucked into it. Oh, yeah, you for sure you do. And I know we've talked a lot about Facebook, and I kind of added here, like, don't let Facebook become Wastebook. And I know you've already talked a little bit about social media, but it's the same thing with Instagram, with Pinterest, whatever you're doing, like, you get sucked in, right? Yeah. But I don't want us to underestimate the power of having a few moments on Facebook, whether it's more to just play. Yeah. And to get in there and to like things and to comment on things because that keeps your algorithm going so that you can start to see activity on your other, your business posts. Um, and I try to, when I'm on Facebook, I always do a, a personal post a day. And sometimes I do them, like I ask for advice. I remember one time I asked for parenting advice and Amy, you called me out. You're like, why are you asking for parenting I'm advice saying, on Facebook? Yeah, I sent you a text message. I'm like, why are you asking for parenting advice on Facebook? That is- I had like a hundred likes on that thing. So sure enough, I know I'm popping up in somebody's algorithm. So, I mean, it's important too. Right. I know Les talks about every morning she gives herself 30 minutes and she wishes happy birthday. She does her likes. She does her comments. It's important because the other thing is, is I want my friends to know I'm a Plexus ambassador and they want them to support me, but they're also on my Facebook to see my family, what I'm doing, who I am. So that's a part of network marketing is the relationship. So if you stop your own post and only become a network marketer, you lose part of the power of that Facebook. That's so, that's such a good tip, separating your, your Facebook time between kind of work and then just playing around and building those relationships. Yeah. I had to start doing that. I mean, I got to the point where I would log into Facebook. I only checked my notifications, my messages, and then the team page. Because if I would even look at the news feed, I would get sucked in. Um, And so then I realized, well, I'm not really being a good Facebook person because I'm not sharing like I used to on a personal level. There are, now that I'm friends with so many ambassadors, my newsfeed is nothing but Plexus. So I knew there were friends of mine that I was missing their updates. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but I love actually scheduling that time too. So I think I'm going to add that to my DMO, having like fun play on Facebook for 30 minutes a day. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's about the relationships. Yeah. And then I know you do this too, because I took it from you, but I watch. And right now, lots of my friends are talking about how they're exhausted. They have too much to do. And I'm like, I am targeting my posts yes. coming up about sleeping better, sleeping yeah. more sound. It's the only way you're going to learn about your network. Yeah. Mm. I love that. So um, this one was Amy's, and I didn't understand it at first, and I was like, what are nooks and crannies, Amy? But I understood it once you explained it, um, and I kind of um, envisioned it as the concept of like becoming plexus, right? Like I'm inserting it in every piece of my life that I can. I'll give you a prime example. I was at Kroger the other day, and I was picking up my um, coconut milk, because that's what I use in my shakes. And another woman was reading the label, and I just started talking about the power of coconut milk. Mm -hmm. And then she said, oh, how do you, you know, use it? And then I explained to her what the shake I use, et cetera, and that's a natural thermogenic. That's the example that I came up with when you said, like, infuse it in everything that you do. Well, like, I'm randomly talking to people at the grocery store, right? Right. And that's, that's you living and breathing your journey of your products. And that is what I feel like really gives the power behind the network marketing. Right. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that that's the great thing about network marketing is that you can work the business in the nooks and crannies of your life. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about talking earlier. Um, you have to, though, at least be committed, um, because I know for me, if, you know, when I was working and I felt like, oh, my gosh, I have to do plexus on my lunch hour. I have to get up before the family gets up or stay up. I was still wasting some time in there. Like there was still probably a little too much TV time. Now I love my TV. I'm not going to get rid of it altogether, but you know, fill, finding the nooks and crannies to work plexus, that might mean turning the TV off 30 minutes earlier and then spending those 30 minutes on, um, on a video or on, you know, whatever your income producing activity is. Or if you commute, Maybe instead of listening to the morning radio, maybe you listen to a YouTube Plexus video, or maybe you listen to, you know, one of the network marketing books on tape. Um, so even though it does fit into the nooks and crannies nicely, there are things you can do to kind of maximize the time you do have. I would agree. So I do. I've been commuting to work a lot, and you know, I don't always do that, but I've been listening every day this week to a YouTube video. Um, and that's outside of my hour, right? Like I have my hour in the morning at night and now I'm getting some time behind the windshield listening to things. So, yeah. um, so the last thing I think on this, Amy, when I was considering like what would make somebody successful in any time management, whether it's for network marketing or not, is you have to value your time. And that means you have to take your own breaks. You have to have your family time. Um, so I know you talked about this a while ago is like scheduling your time and being purposeful about it um, and making the commitment to be able to do that. And I think that's big. And that may be saying no every once in a while to something that you think would be great to do, but like you haven't had dinner with your family or, you know, that's, I think just a balance of life in general. I don't think that has to do with plexus or whatever. I think it's figuring out how to value your own time and then make it work for you. Cause we all wake up with the same 24 hours every day. Right. 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 And you know, this reminds me, I was on somebody else's team call just last night and I made the comment, you know, they asked me kind of what advice would I give? And I made the comment, Plexus has to be a priority if you want to work it as a business. But what I, I didn't mean, um, you know, I told them, I said, I don't mean a priority over your family or your current job or your relationships or anything like that. But as wonderful as these products are, I mean, they pretty much sell themselves. And, um, you know, and uh, as amazing as the compensation plan and the company is, it does take some time and commitment. Like you said, Sarah, if you do it sometimes, then sometimes you might get a check. Um, so I really think that while, you know, we do want to have that balance and make, but I think you have to have that commitment to work plexus. Whether it's three hours a day or three minutes a day, you have to have that commitment. Um, and, and to focus on those, those, you know, income producing activities and that daily method and be consistent with it. So I love that. I think this has been a huge help. Um, 
And what I'd like to do, I, I, think, after, I think when some of us get our daily method of operations, um, I would love us to share those. Um, and it doesn't mean your system can't change and everyone's is gonna be different, um, but I would love to share some more of those on the team page with everybody. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, okay. So hey, Amy, before we move to preparing for resolution season, I, I'm curious if we could just ask, like, is there anything that kind of resonates with anybody on the phone or something that you think we've totally missed? I would love to, to hear. Anybody have any thoughts? And they're going to have to unmute themselves. <coughs> they can always chat it too if they want. Oh, yeah, that's another great thing. Okay. And you know, it almost, some, some of you guys might smack me for saying this, but Sarah, you work from home. I do. The beauty of this, and I think also the curse is when now that I don't have a full time job, it's actually even harder for me to schedule my time around Plexus. <clears throat> I know that sounds crazy, but when I had when I was working full time and I only had one hour at lunch, I knew I had to get these things knocked out. Um, as your as this is your own business, I think you are your own um, worst enemy, or at least I am. Maybe it's just my personality. You kind of hit on it, Sarah, when you said. Um, you know, be your own CEO because mm -hmm. it's totally up to you, right? You're not accountable to me. You want everyone to be successful. You want your team to be successful, but it's ultimately up to you. You don't have, you know, a boss or anybody kind of telling you what to do and here's what you need to do it. Um, and for sometimes like for someone like me that can, um, I can really get off in Facebook waste book land or get off on a tangent or think I have all day to do it and I look up and all of a sudden I've not done any of it and um, the day's almost over so I think it, I think it can take self-discipline it, it if I can step in there a second guys because I can totally relate to exactly what you're saying now Amy yeah can you hear me um, I I commented on a post just the other night for the uh, DMO and having just recently in the past two weeks or three weeks gone full time with Plexus, it has, um, it has been kind of a struggle to uh, find my uh, daily routine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just now getting, you know, focused on, okay, what to do and when to do it. Um, I, I love, love, love working this business full time. Don't get me wrong, but when I was working another job and only had a limited amount of time, you know, it was like, okay, well, I do it then and I do it then. But now that I have all day long, right. I work all day long. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, the, um, <clears throat> the DMO that I, I got from our um, uh, Pink Rock Stars just the other night was so awesome because okay so now let's do this this and this and I did it today and it, it worked beautifully awesome. because I, I got everything done that you know I really felt like I needed to do without actually forgetting something or getting sidetracked on this or whatever and just coming back from um, a three-day weekend of an event I have all these people to um, follow up with but it was like okay do this do this and do this and it worked beautifully today I love so that. I'm super excited about that that's awesome I'm gonna have to start doing that because you know now that I'm doing it too there actually have been days where I will look up and I think I may have even posted about it I'll look up and it's two o'clock and I'm still in my pajamas <laughs> I've done a lot, but I've not necessarily taken care of my now, now, I'm not going to say that I changed out of my pajamas today because Bruce came by this evening and goes, well, how long did it take you to get ready for work today? <laughs> now, yeah, that I'm still working on. Yeah. Well, yeah. That happens for any work from home, right? Yeah. So. Betty, it's good though, and I'll remind everybody if you didn't see it, we did uh, yesterday. I posted a, a video, a quick one, it's three minutes about DMOs, and she has some great ones on there. Um, one of the things I love the for DMO, and Amy's gonna laugh at me, is to take her products. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can add that as your DMO. That's really an important one. We'll yeah. talk about that one here next, too, about resolution season. 
So let's go, let's talk about resolution season, guys. It is upon us. And here is what's going to happen. So this is, we are all new on the Pink Rockstars resolution season. Uh, I joined in March last year. So this is my first holiday too. But what I've been told from all of our uplines who were here for the past few weeks <coughs> is the way this is going to go in January, maybe like the first week, you're going to have all those people who are going to do it themselves. They're going to go back to the gym. They're going to eat healthy. And then in the second week of January, they're going to say, screw this. I don't want to go to the gym every day. I don't want to eat um, lettuce. I'm going to check out that plexus that so-and-so has been posting about. Um, so then you have the wave of New Year's resolution people taking up the bulk of January and February. Coming out of February, you were going into spring break season in March. So you got a lot of people um, wanting to get healthy and get in shape for spring break. And then that goes right into summer. So if we are not prepping our businesses now for resolution season, you, we're not going to reap the benefits um, of all of the months to come in 2016 when the historically the business is at its greatest. So you want to plant those seeds now. Uh, people are watching. I posted today um, a screenshot of somebody who told me, and I've never spoken to this girl before. Um, she told me she'd been watching my post since March or April and is now ready to try it. So I just cannot stress how important it is to continually post on Facebook. I know at times we get demotivated. I know we get frustrated. I know we feel like it's going nowhere and nobody's watching us, but I promise you they are. Um, and, you know, they're watching you. But what you want to do in your post, you want to be very strategic. Um, while posting on Facebook is simple, there are some strategies behind effective Facebook posting. Um, there's actually a video on the team page for uh, how to make effective Facebook posts. So if you don't think yours are being very effective, the great news is you can change up your posts at any time and learn um, from some of these techniques. Uh, so that video is posted. And just so you guys know and you can let your teams know, you can search our Facebook page for anything. That'll make it easy to find. I know the activity kicks it up in there. Um, so a lot of things get buried to the bottom. So you can always search the page. Um, and Facebook has made it a lot easier even on the app now to search the page. But you want to have effective posts. You know, we've talked before about posting on Facebook when the best time is. You don't necessarily want to post your very best Plexus post on a Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Nobody's on Facebook. Um, so you want to be very strategic. But the other thing you're doing in your Plexus post is building that belief in the products. That's why we stress all the time, do not post salesy posts, because you're not building belief in the products. People over time aren't able to see what the products can do and how they can help so many people, so many different health issues. Um, and you know, some business posts are fine, but you want to have a really good mix so people can see exactly what those products can do. Um, so it doesn't mean people are going to, you know, jump on board right now in December, but if you're building that belief in December and they see you posting, and then when they're ready in January to finally try it, they're going to go to you. If you've not been posting and you decide to take the holidays off or you use the holidays as an excuse, because I know we're all busy, we all want to take time off, spend it with our families, a lot of us are going to be traveling. It's easy to use those as excuses not to work your business. Um, but then in January, when those people want to try Plexus, if, if you're not at the forefront and you've not been following up or they're not thinking of you, they're going to think of somebody else or they're going to go with, you know, the person that messaged them last or the person whose Facebook post they happen to see last um, when they want to reach out on Facebook. So the other thing we're doing for resolution season that you can start posting about and talking about now is this January weight loss challenge. And so, you know, we want to get people really, really excited around this because even people who are currently on Plexus, um, your current customers, even myself, 
we might want to lose some holiday weight. You know, just because I'm on Plexus doesn't mean necessarily I'm not going to put on a couple pounds on the holidays or maybe splurge a little bit more than I would. And so we're having this January group. If you've not seen it or joined it yet, make sure you do. It's called um, Happy and Healthy in the New Year. We're doing it with some of our sidelines. And it's going to be through January and February. People just have to be using Plexus products to be a part of the group. And we're going to have fun contests and prizes. Um, the person who loses the most weight and then the most inches, they're going to win prizes. We're going to have drawings for fun stuff. And it's also going to be kind of like um, an opportunity meeting where we'll also talk about other products. So share that. A couple people already have so we can borrow each other's posts. But that's something to get people excited about. And of course, um, if anybody wants to do it, we're encouraging them to order now so they have their products in time. Um, the other thing we want to do to get ready for resolution season, and this is both a blessing and a curse. Resolution season means everybody, you know, is feeling, um, after the holidays, they might be feeling like they put on the holiday weight and they're finally ready to get healthy and lose the weight. So you want to focus and do some targeted weight loss posts um, on your on, on your post and, and share some of those. Because one, they're good visuals, right? The before and afters of weight loss are just good visuals to get people's attention. But it's also what people are going to be looking for. In January, people are going to want to lose weight. Um, they're not going to care that Plexus is going to get them healthy. They're not going to care that they can get off medication. They're not going to care that they can save money on junk food. They're just going to want to lose weight. So that's a blessing and a curse for us. It's a blessing in that that's kind of an instant market, and we have a, a great testimonies from people that have lost weight. But it's also a curse in that, you know, we aren't a diet, and you're not going to lose weight in two weeks. So once you get these resolution people, you want to be really, really careful and upfront and honest and let them know you're not going to lose weight in two weeks. You might not lose weight in a month. Um, and so that's just something to be aware of here for resolution season, since all of the people are going to be ready, uh, to lose weight. Maximize now guys on the free shipping. We have four days left, right? Today's the 10th. <clears throat> yeah, four days. So even if you have people who have told you, um, I don't want to start till January. That's fine. Um, Order now, though, so you can take advantage of the free shipping, and then you can sit your products on your counter or in a cupboard, and you don't have to start them until January 4th. Um, obviously, we would want to tell people, you know, I tell people all the time uh, who say, oh, well, don't wait until, I want to wait until Monday, or I want to wait until the, the, uh, the beginning of the month. Well, that's the great thing about Plexus, right, is that you don't have to. It's not a diet. It's super easy. Um, but for those people who really just want to push off to January, that's fine. But I'd really maximize that free shipping because for some people, especially on the welcome packs, that's like 10 bucks off. That's a really good savings. Um, we talked about uh, being persistent and consistent, but this also goes into being a product of the product. And this is something that's really important over the holidays, guys. You want to continue taking your products. Again, don't let the holidays and all the cookies and pies and cakes and travel and visiting your family, don't let that be an excuse to get off of your products. You want to be able to show people through your own posts and just, you know, your own selfies and pictures that Plexus is so easy. You can continue doing it over the holidays. You guys are doing it. It's helped you with the stress of shopping and buying gifts and visiting family. <coughs> um, it's helped you, um, you know, even to have control over the food of the holidays. Maybe instead of three cookies, you only had one. Um, little things like that. You want to be a product of the product, especially over the holidays, to show people um, how easy it is and that it's not something that you stop. Pour into your team, too, um, and don't give yourself a pass. So one thing about December, and I mentioned it here at the beginning, it's really going to set the tone for 2016 because once resolution season hits, it is just a snowball effect all the way through summer. If you or your teams take December off, 
because they, they just want to take time for the holidays or maybe they're frustrated with all the shipping issues and the new back office. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge, huge mistake because come January, when all of us who've been working the business hit resolution season, we're going to be off and run into the races. Anybody else who took December off, they're going to have to start over in January and they may never get caught up and they may never catch that momentum back um, that goes right into spring break and summer. Um, we want to be able to tap into um, that potential. I mean, it is unlimited potential coming with resolution season on into spring break and summer. So I would say that the next 20 days of the month are really, really important. Now, if you don't get a bunch of new customers or new ambassadors in the next 20 days, that's fine. Don't get discouraged. Keep working your business because I promise you if you keep doing that, they are going to be coming in January and February. Um, the other thing I want to make sure though we talk about is don't project, um, don't project things onto your potentials or onto your customers. And what I mean by that is don't make assumptions that they can't afford it or they won't buy Plexus because they want to buy Christmas presents or, you know, they won't do certain things um, because there's not a sale. Oh, sorry, my phone's going off because there's not a sale. So don't project. Um, it's easy to do. We've all done it. Um, but don't, I think Sarah, what we were on something the other night and you had said, um, kind of assume that everybody is going to do plexus. Is that, did you say something? Yeah, yeah. I do. And I get that from you really is that <laughs> I should assume don't ever, cause I have some, I have a couple of customers under me that I think if you were to have asked me, I would be like, they would never reach out to me. Right. That's just not their style. Um, but they are some of my most loyal customers they're also buying at retail because that's just what they, not that that's what I'm encouraging them to do, but they're even paying a higher price for it right, that are right. consistent with it. <clears throat> oh yes. Betty said it there in a chat to everybody. Don't prejudge. That's exactly the word I was looking for, Betty. Don't yeah. prejudge. <clears throat> and it's easy to do now. You know, the yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how sometimes the people that you least <coughs> are going to be interested or they turn out to be the most, you know, valuable customers or um, amazing, uh, amazing ambassadors. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very true. So true. Um, and I love to use myself as an example on that only because I was anti uh, <laughs> plexus. I was anti plexus. I rolled my eyes. I said, you, no, were, a, you were a snob, right? I was a snob. <laughs> I, was, I was a product snob and then I was a business <laughs> MLM snob. Um, but so if I can turn, anybody can turn. Uh, <laughs> I was definitely a snob. So the next 20 days are key. I want you guys to be thinking about your income producing activities and how you can fit them into your daily method of operation over these next 20 days. And the same thing we talked about at Thanksgiving over how you can maximize the holidays you want to be doing at Christmas because we might even see more people at Christmas, more family, more friends, more people when you're out shopping. Um, I know one thing I did, I ordered already some sample cards um, to put those little ease packets on, you know, to give, I love the little ease cream samples. Those things are so great and they're cheaper too than giving a slim to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, just, you know, things like that that we talked about over Thanksgiving on ways to maximize the holiday. We want to be doing that. Um, we just don't want to slow down. So does anybody have any, we have about 10 minutes left. Anybody have any questions, suggestions, want to share? Okay. All right. Thank you, Sarah, for doing that for us. No problem. No problem. And like I say to everybody, same thing as you, Amy, reach out. If you have questions, we're going to be posting these on the pink rock star um, as we go through the next couple of days. But if you have questions, friend me, reach out. Happy to help. Thank you. Thanks no? guys. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.